Hello, my name is Brandon Enright, and tonight I'd like to quickly sketch an outline for how to solve Aton's Master Kirby Copter Plus. Um, this puzzle is pretty much the same thing as a Master Kirby Copter with um, an added unbandaging cut. Um, and because it's a master puzzle, there have to be two added unbandaging cuts, this one and this one. Um, and so this is a edge turning puzzle, you know, it turns like a turns like a, a curvy copter, and then it's got this additional slice layer, so then it turns like a master curvy copter. Um, and the unique thing about this puzzle is that uh, when you do the normal jumbling sequence, here let me do it with just the outer faces, outer edges first, um, you can do an additional move for that cut lines up and you can uh, you can separate that piece and then you can also turn the slice of course and so you can separate uh, that piece also so I want to talk about how to solve this puzzle now I'm gonna assume that you're gonna solve it um, with jumbling and there's actually a pretty good reason why you want to solve it with jumbling um, there's some really complicated, well, first of all, if you don't solve it with jumbling, if you just scramble it without jumbling moves, most of these pieces can't be separated from each other. So that's not that interesting. And <clears throat> second of all, there's some really complicated orbits that these pieces are in, and um, some really complicated parodies between the orbits and if you try to solve this puzzle without jumbling you're going to run into some parity issues and it's going to be really hard to figure out how to solve it with those parity issues but if you jumble the puzzle then the parity issues just go away because you can move pieces out of their orbits and so you can always just fix it um so you know the initial unjumbling is going to be hard but once you've unjumbled it, it it should be relatively straightforward to use jumbling to your advantage for the rest of the solve Alrighty, um, so um, I would suggest doing a reduction solve and reducing it to a very shallow curvy copter. And so by a very shallow curvy copter, I mean reducing it to a puzzle where all you have to do is just turn these outer edge pieces. And so what that means is that um, you will solve these four inner uh, diamond pieces on each one of the faces because you can no longer turn them with the uh, shallow with the shallow turns they just don't turn at all um, and the centers get reduced to this block of pieces all the way around the center that all turns into one big macro center and so these are the helicopter cube triangles right here these one two three four pieces and then here's the corner um, and so it's it really just behaves like a, a really shallow curvy copter and the only you know truly extra piece is these four in here in the center and these if you reduce it to a, a shallow a short shallow curvy copter um, these pieces are actually the core um, but of course you know with a with the additional slice move it's not the core but when you reduce it it'll be the core so the only real trick here is in doing all of the pairing up to form all of these piece groups. Um, and so what I recommend you do is you pair up this tiny triangle with that trapezoid, with that trapezoid, with that, it's almost almost rectangle, but it's actually a trapezoid. So you pair those four up. And then you pair up that trapezoid with that sort of skewed trapezoid with that skewed trapezoid. So you pair those three pieces up um, and that, then once you do that, you can, you can reduce the puzzle with a normal curvy copter or, or master curvy copter moves. Um, so let me show what master curvy copter moves I'm talking about here. So let's say we want to cycle these edge wing pieces. And so you'd be cycling them to pair them up with the center here. So if we do a slice move, um, and then if we turn this, Alrighty, then this piece is isolated in a slice move. So if we do a slice move here, alrighty, 
Alrighty, okay, so that was, we did x and y, now we're going to undo x, which is this slice move. Then we're going to undo y, which is this conjugate, which is so it's this move. And then this slice move. And then we're going to undo the, the setup move, which is this move right here. And we will have three cycled that edge wing to there, to there. Okay. Now I'm going to undo that commutator, which means I do the white part first, and the white part starts with this, and then it does this slice move. Okay. And then it's, this is the X part, which we do second now because we're undoing. Okay, now we undo Y. Done, and then we undo X, and we're back. Alrighty, so that's how you can cycle edge wings. Um, now let's say we want to cycle. Oh, well, let's let's cycle these pieces right here. Now we can already do edge, edge wings pure, so it doesn't matter if we move an edge wing with this 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 one, two, three, this macro piece. So let's see if we can figure out how to do this macro piece. Okay, and well, that'll do it. It's not pure, but just a 1-1 one, one commutator is really simple. Alrighty, and see it did uh, did this macro piece in the edge wing and whatever that trapezoid is, but don't worry about that trapezoid because well, we'll work on that next. Let's see if we can do this trapezoid pure. Or actually, it, this trapezoid would be allowed to move the edge wings because we already have a pure edge wing routine. So let's undo this commutator. Let's see if we can figure out these. So let's do this move. Now let's try to isolate this purple piece. So if we do this turn right here. Okay. And now it's isolated in this move. Okay. And then if we undo, and then we undo the slice move. Okay. And then undo this move. Alrighty, and that does a three cycle of this piece, this piece, and that piece. So it does a, right, okay. Um, let's see if I can get this orientation back. Okay, I think that'll do it. Okay, and let me undo. That means we can cycle edge wings. We can cycle these macro pieces, these sort of chiral edge center pieces. And we can cycle these trapezoid pieces. We already know how to do corners through standard Kirby copter uh, uh, routines. Um, so we don't worry about those. Um, and now we need to talk about forming these macro blocks because we have a whole bunch of pieces. So the one piece that is not involved in a macro block are these inner diamond pieces. And these inner diamond pieces actually behave exactly like helicopter cube triangles, only instead of, or curvy copter shields, but instead of outer moves to do, you do inner moves. So you do the, you do the slice move. And so if you do, 
something like that. And then something like that. And then something like that. I'm just doing a, a standard well-known commutator for the helicopter cube triangles, only I'm using slice moves to do it. Um, in fact, this commutator is such a easy repetition. There we go. So, triangle, triangle, triangle. This this commutator, this this edge to this edge, this edge to this edge to this edge to this edge. You know, you, you just back and forth, back and forth. Um, it, it is a commutator, but I think most people have it memorized as a pattern. It also interestingly does these edge wings at the same time, um, and you'll notice actually that there's a symmetry to it. So that these are in a they're in a mirror. Um, almost like in a triangle, and these are also in a mirror. And it turns out that when you jumble this puzzle, these inner triangles and these edge wings are the exact same piece, and so they can go in each other's spot. So let me first undo these, and then I'll start talking about the jumbling on this puzzle. So... is undone. Okay, so I think that that takes care of every aspect of this puzzle that is not, does not involve jumbling. And if you're familiar with the Curvy Copter Plus, you'll probably know about a sequence for swapping um, the extra piece on the Curvy Copter Plus. Let me show you what that looks like. So actually, let me sh turn both of these, because when you turn both of these always together, this puzzle just behaves like a Curvy Copter. So, so we built up a symmetry here. So turn this to a jumbling angle, turn this to a jumbling angle, turn that to a jumbling angle. And now we have this move that will swap this big macro triangle and this big macro triangle. Okay. Undo that move, undo that move, and then, right? And what that do, did is it's, well, there's a lot of ways to look at it, um, but it swapped this macro block with that macro block, um, which allows you to pair up this macro block with the rest of the pieces, that piece specifically and that piece specifically. Um, and it also swapped um, this macro block with that macro block, but that doesn't really matter because you're reducing this puzzle. You don't really worry about uh, you know large blocks of swap. You only worry about things that changed in pairs. Um, so let's undo that. I always have a little bit of trouble in doing this thing, but okay, I should do it. Okay, it turns out that. that what I just showed you is all that is necessary to pair up all of these big, all of these pieces. So let's start experimenting. So let's let's do just do the shallow, the shallow edge first, and then shallow edge, shallow edge. Alrighty, this, as you can see, is sufficient handle those small triangles. And so you can pair those really small triangles with that trapezoid. Right? And you just do this move. Okay. And then you undo, undo. There we go. Okay. So that now from seeing that, you can handle those small triangles by pairing them to the trapezoid. Okay. So now let's look at pairing the small triangle and the trapezoid to this outer piece. Or 
potentially just pairing this trapezoid to this outer piece. And then if, if we paired the trapezoid to the outer piece first, then we could pair the small triangles to the trapezoid and they'd automatically be paired up with the outer piece too. So let me undo. I, I don't have any notes here. Um, I spent about 10 minutes working on this puzzle before the video. Um, and I'm just sort of repeating the same steps that I did to figure it out in the first place. And so that's why it's not the smoothest video in the world, but plus this, the, it's super easy on this puzzle to turn both at the same time. That's easy. But turning the shallow edge without turning the slice is quite challenging. There's a lot of pieces turning and you have to get them all lined up perfectly and that's kind of hard. Alrighty, so we know how to take handle these small triangles now. So now let's look at uh, let's look at turning both of these at the same time, okay, and then turning the shallow, which is hard as I said, right? Turn the shallow, turn the shallow. Alrighty, now if we turn the shallow. That takes care of the small triangles. We already know how to do this. But if we turn the slice, that does that triangle right there. It or it does that trapezoid. Okay, ignore what it did right here. We can ignore that. Right? So that allows us to pair the triangle and the trapezoid with this outer piece. And I'm not going to bother to go all the way through that. I think you can probably see that just fine. Okay. So. We can now do the triangle and that trapezoid, and we can pair it to that trapezoid. And we already know how to cycle these almost rectangular trapezoids around. So that means that we can do this whole, we can, we can form this entire shield piece. So the only pieces that are remaining is that piece, and that piece, and that piece. Now, this is going to be just like, uh, we're going to be pairing this piece to this piece, and then pairing that piece, you know, the group to here or pairing this this middle one to that one, and then this one to the middle one, and that'll automatically form all three of them. Um, and if we can do that, then everything I've shown you is sufficient to solve the puzzle. Let's see if I can figure that out. Alrighty, so I'm going to turn just the slice and see if I can get it aligned. It's always a little bit more of a challenge to get just the slice aligned. Yes, okay, I got it aligned. Okay, so I have just the slice. Now I'm going to try turning shallow until it aligns, which is always a little bit of a challenge. And shallow until it aligns. There we go. We have it aligned. Whew, that is an interesting pattern. Alrighty. Now, if I turn, if I turn uh, the shallow center, it does the innermost trapezoid. Okay? So that's sufficient to solve the... You can... Using that routine... But let me finish this routine. I'll finish this one, but I won't finish the second one. Okay. So I'm going to do this 180 on the shallow. Oh, I, yeah, there we go. Alrighty. Now, shallow back shallow back, and then and what that did was it swapped that one with that one, which allows us to pair that up to that. Okay, it's going to be a little bit of a challenge to undo that. Um, Once I get it all aligned, which is always a little bit of a challenge. Oh, there we go. Now it's aligned. Okay. Let 
Okay. That took care of the inner trapezoid. The only thing that's left is this skewed trapezoid. Let's see if I can figure that out. Now I think we already actually saw how to do that, which is turn this slice until it's aligned. Okay. And then turn Okay, now turn shallow up until it's aligned. Turn shallow down until it's aligned. Alrighty, now before I turned the, when I got it all aligned, I turned the, the shallow middle. But now, if we either turn just the slice all by itself, so that's, that's the slice without, okay, that will handle just that piece. Or if we want to do the pair at the same time, then we turn both the slice and the shallow at the same time. And then let me undo. When I get it all aligned. Shallow back up. Shallow back down. around. Okay. That did ah um it ended up swapping the outer ones rather than the inner ones. It actually swapped the inner ones rather than the outer ones like this. So it did the inner one swap like that, but it also affected these pieces because of uh we turned the, the slice at the same time. Um, it, it doesn't really matter. You can you can cycle the outer ones to the inner ones instead of the inner ones to the outer ones. It really doesn't really matter. Um, undoing this is going to be a, a little bit of a challenge though, because I, I I've forgotten which direction I went. Um, so I think I do something like this, and then At this, both of these at the same time. Okay. Shallow up, shallow down. Alrighty, there we go. That is sufficient to solve the entire puzzle. So let me go over the steps again. I would, well, first unjumble it. Then I would start solving. I would start pairing up the small triangle to that trapezoid and then pairing the group to that trapezoid to form those three. Then I would, and I would ignore the centers, then I would solve the skewed trapezoid by pairing it up to that trapezoid and then I would pair the group to that skewed trapezoid. So then I'd have those three. When you do both, both mirrors, you will have all these three solved, paired, well paired up, they won't be solved, but they'll be paired up reduced. You have these three solved, you'll have these three solved, and you'll have these three solved. Okay. Then I would solve the inner uh, diamonds here um, to the right color scheme. Okay. Then I would pair up, um, if you'll recall, the routine to pair this up moved the edge wing too. So I would pair these up with the um, center edges without worrying about moving the edge wings. Then I would move, I would pair the edge wings to the edge centers. Okay. And then you'd have the entire edge, you'd have the entire center formed. Then I would cycle around these pieces, the, the outer portion of the stack of four, which we know how to do pure. I would cycle them to the, these three that are grouped. Okay. And at that point, you'll have this fully reduced to a shallow curvy copter, and you can solve the shallow curvy copter. Now, there's only one gotcha, um, and that is that you can have what looks like two edge wings swapped. 
um, and everything else on this puzzle solved. And the reason you can have two edge wings swapped and everything else solved in this puzzle is what I went to when I was discussing before, which is these, these diamonds, these inner diamonds are the same pieces as those edge wings. So watch this. If I turn the edge slice up, okay, and then I bring this edge slice around, okay, and then I bring that edge slice down, back down. As you can see, there are edge wings that are sticking out of the center, and there is a deep down in there, you won't be able to see it in, under this lighting, but deep down in there, there is a center right there. If So there's a purple one. If you get the other purple one right there, and then you do a shallow, then you do a shallow, you will swap two purple, which are identical. Then you undo everything, and when you undo everything, you will end up swapping a pair of these without breaking anything else. And that is how you would handle if you have an apparent parity. You just handle it with basic jumbling. It's really simple. Alrighty, I believe that that is sufficient to solve this entire puzzle, and it would be a lot of fun because it's a reduction solve, so you don't really have to worry about like catastrophic moves screwing everything up. You know, you're just pairing things up, so you don't have to worry about like ever undoing these turns. You can just do them as much as you want. You don't have to undo them. And because it's, you know, such a systematic, and you use basically the same inner core routine to solve almost all of these pieces, or pair them all up anyways, it's pretty simple. It should be a fun solve. So with that, thanks for watching.